Christy Foy is here talking quarterbacks as she usually does on Sports Not. And Christy, let's get a little bit deeper into Davis Mills. How would you compare his rookie campaign to some of the other quarterback performances we saw? Yeah, I think a lot of people ahead of the, the draft that Davis Mills was selected in last year, I think that they kind of had him too low. And I think people realize that whenever he got drafted a lot higher than the projection said, most people had him at QB 8 through 15. I really was not on a lot of people's radar. And so I think that Mac Jones kind of takes the cake here as the quarterback who performed the best last year. But then we think about it. So Mac Jones is also placed into the most advantageous situation out of all these guys based on his skill set. And then Davis Mills, a little bit of rough going there at the beginning, but he shows signs of being able to turn this team around uh, later on in his rookie campaign. And the Texans last year were a team that was pretty much almost entirely devoid of talent on either side of the ball. So to be able to go into that situation and give this team a little bit of a spark, even though their final record might not reflect it, uh, says a lot about Mills as a quarterback, especially in the first year making a transition like that. So can it be advantageous for a quarterback to be not overshadowed, but, you know, a later pick in a draft selection in terms of just expectation, especially in today's NFL? Did he benefit from that at all? Yeah, I think so. Just because, I mean, whenever you have guys that go early on, they go into teams and the fan base and a lot of people around them say, okay, well, this guy was super good in college. So if he could take this college team to these new heights, he can be our savior and he can fix our entire team. And that's just not, that's usually not how it works. So in the previously in the NFL, a long time ago, you would have rookies come in, they would sit for at least a season and they would kind of learn and make the transition that way. And guys are not really given an opportunity to sit anymore. And so I think that a lot of guys come in too early. Uh, they're not developed enough. They're not given a chance to do that. And they get kind of chastised over it. So I think that to get picked later on, that spotlight's not as heavily on you. So I think it does help a little bit whenever you kind of exceed the expectations at a lower pick. And as it relates to his skill set, Chrissy, did we see anything in the NFL that we didn't see during his collegiate career? Yeah, I think that you saw a lot more mobility and ability to evade pressure because in the West Coast offense at Stanford, they really don't ask the quarterback to move around that much. But then when you get to the NFL, you're going to have to evade pressure and do stuff like that. So we went through these mobility drills to show that, hey, I can do this. But then people still kind of didn't believe it because they didn't see it on tape a lot. But that's kind of the thing is there's a lot of quarterbacks that get knocked for things that they supposedly can't do just because they weren't asked to do them before. I think that's something that we see here. And so even though it is pretty early, how would you assess the outlook for Davis Mills moving forward? I think right now he has the full backing of Lovey Smith, the head coach. I think that the way the Texans drafted showed that this is a quarterback that they do want to invest in. I think he showed a solid foundation. So I think as of now, based on what we've seen from Davis Mills, that he is a guy who can be the long-term starter. It's just easy to be skeptical about that because of how much turnover the Texans have had at the quarterback position from starter to backup. There's just been absolutely no consistency. And this is the first real sign that maybe this might be a possibility. All right, Christy Ford, quarterback analyst. Thanks for being with us.